What is up, you guys? It's Latrice, and I am back with another episode here on the Lift Her Up podcast or Lift Her Up TV if you are watching on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for continuing to support the podcast with your likes, shares, and subscriptions. It really does my heart some good. And thank you also for leaving um, your, your reviews and comments and, and five stars on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and wherever rating is available for, for podcasts. I really appreciate you guys. Um, today's episode is a little bit different. I got to keep it real with y'all. I got to be honest. Um, I did not want to record today. And this was kind of a, a, not of a, not a last minute thing, but the Lord was really like pushing me to, <laughs> to do this. Um, I got to give y'all the real, I wasn't up for it. It's been a kind of like a difficult last past about two weeks or so. And really the last couple of months have just been this transitional period that I've been going through and I was trying to procrastinate on it. And the Lord was like, mm mm coming up out of that, coming up out of that. And I really didn't think honestly that I had anything to talk about. And that happens occasionally. Um, but today I don't have like a, a strategy or process or anything. Today is more about just giving updates on my life and just different lessons that I've been learning in hopes that it gives some sort of a uh, plant, some seed of encouragement to to you who are listening and watching so the Lord just told me to share what I've been going through share what you've been going through and I'm like okay so here I am just being obedient to that so that's what we're going to talk about today just some updates and things that I've been going through so um I shared this one of the last videos that I did one of the last episodes that I've been going through this sort of isolation period and it's not a complete isolation I should say it's it's kind of this weird thing I'm definitely more secluded though from people that I typically would not be so um pretty much like everyone every realm of person family some friends um you know I just and I realize I unintentionally intentionally (laughs) put myself into isolation it was really God's design um to to do it that way but I didn't know that I was going to be entering this sort of season um and the the Lord has just been telling me he's been very uh persistent in telling me to not share certain things with um, a, a masses of people to keep certain things uh close to my chest close to the vest not to share certain visions and and plans that I have kind of just to stay closer to him to get more strategy on where my life is going, where my purpose is going and um and not everyone being able to to handle that and not being able to reveal certain parts uh, of things that he's revealing to me. So just keeping certain things to myself, unless he gives me the the clearance to to release it. So it's it's been odd a little bit, um, a little bit more quiet in my life, not as chaotic, at least externally. And I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, but basically, I've sort of just been in my own bubble. I've been trying to plan and strategize for lift her up he's given me different um, things to think about going into next year and even years beyond that different plans and goals that I want to achieve with my platform and also just in in my personal life so that's kind of what I've been doing but the longer that I've been walking in this secluded place I've just realized that not everyone has the capacity to journey along with you. So that's, that's what I've been learning in that. Um, And with isolation, I've been wanting to do another episode that dives deeper into what isolation is, give some biblical examples of what it looks like. um, And some characters that have walked it out very well, and some that maybe not have walked it out well. And just give like a background as to how God uses isolation as a tool to revamp us and sometimes prepare us and all these great 
things, you know, sometimes it's painful to to go through it because you do feel alone at different points. But um, but yeah, isolation is definitely needed. And I think I'm going to do a video later on about just isolation and, and how all that has been. But like I said, I've been going through this isolation probably about two to three months now two almost three months. And um, I didn't think about this until I right before I started recording. And I was prepping for for the for the video. But the transition started right around the time that I was transitioning um, to like a new job. So the isolation started when I was about to transition into a new job. So second update, I got a new job. Yeah. Um, and it's not, it is a congratulations thing. So I'm not going to say don't congratulate me or, you know, like I'm downplaying the blessing when other people need new jobs and things like that. It is a blessing, but it's also a job that I've done before. So I've been at this place for, for a while, like right after I got out of college, uh, um, for, for a couple years and I actually left there 2020 and, um, long story short, I'll probably do another video about that, but I left there in 2020 and I've been on this journey with God and trying to find my purpose and how he wants me to do things. So with my job, that's an area that I transition with a lot <laughs> in this purpose journey that I'm learning. Uh, but I, the, the place that I left, I was working with my dad for a couple years and I was helping him with his business and it was just time to, 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 to transition out of that and to shift a little bit. And it was a difficult decision at, at the beginning, I kind of questioned it. And even, um, right after I started my new job, I was sort of questioning, was it the right thing for me to do? But I, I started to have peace about it. It just felt like I had to do it. I knew a transition was needed and I just went ahead and I, and I leapt into it, not knowing what exactly was going to be on the other side, which I think is the the goal for, for God. And with, <laughs> with my journey is he just wants me to take that leap sometimes, even if it looks like I'm moving backwards in a sense, because I'm going back to a place that I knew that I was familiar with. And it's like, oh my gosh, like I left this place now I'm coming back. Do I look crazy? Uh, so those thoughts did, um, leave, uh, lead, lead in my head for a little while, but I partially think the reason I had to leave the, the previous place is because I was also getting a bit comfortable in my role or like settled in my role, I should say. And a lot of people were relying on me for different things. And I don't think that God wanted me to be there, um, to, to fill that void because I I'm needed in other places and my, my resources, my time, my talents, treasures, all those things, they have to be applied other places. So I don't think he wanted me to wrap myself all the way in, into that, that realm of business. So again, it was a, a tough decision, but I, I ended up having peace about it. Um, in the end, <laughs> But like I said, I was starting to second guess my decision and um, over time I got more confident that I was making the right choice because I was starting to experience that piece. It was just confirmations that I was getting that I needed to go somewhere else, that I needed to be somewhere else. And it kind of just fell in my lap at the the right time and the right moment. So I made my arrangements and and I moved forward. Um, And while I've been at the that the new place, new old place, I should say, my life feels clearer and more still. So that's kind of like what I was talking about before that we will get back into. My life feels less chaotic in a way, like I I feel as if I freed up space, you know, like you have, (laughs) you have your phone, right. And it's telling you that you need more iCloud storage. (laughs) Like it it feels like I just deleted a bunch of unnecessary pictures that I've been holding onto for the last, oh, I don't know, like 
five plus years. <laughs> like I just freed up some space <laughs> in my storage and I can just see more clearer and it's very difficult to explain, but it's like a, a stillness I feel. And I think that perfectly embodies um, Psalms 23, where it says the the Lord will, will lead you to, to still waters, right? So it's allowing God to be the shepherd. I've been in that place where I've been allowing God to be the shepherd of my life and leading me to, to calmness and serenity in the way that only he knows how. So he is a shepherd. He is a good shepherd. And that, that's what I've been learning in this journey. Um, but I know that is difficult for many of us to lean on God and to follow his lead. Definitely for me, which is something that he has highlighted to me in this season while I've been in this transition and in this isolation, right? Like it's, it's easy to be on the inside and be like, okay, Lord, yeah, like now I can see everything that you're doing and what's going on and to follow his lead, right? But before the thing happens, when we can't see it, we have no map of how anything is going to look, right? It's, it's hard to, to follow his lead. And that takes so much practice of submission and, and faith and trust in God to know that he's going to lead you into that, that perfect place. Um, so with that faith and trust submission, those things have to be tested, right? So we don't just wake up and have all those perfect characteristics like, oh, yes, like I'm going to follow God perfectly today. You know, like, no, that doesn't happen. We have to be tested in those things in order to be approved, in order for us to gain those skills, um, those characteristics that he wants. And that's exactly the season that I've been in. OK, a testing season. All right. So it's testing um, mentally, emotionally, physically, like in my body, like just being so tired, mentally being fatigued financially okay like <laughs> it's been a strain it's been a strain like in any way you can imagine testing <laughs> like that that's how I've been feeling in this last season um and of course in the middle of every test the enemy is just lining up all his different tactics and traps to try to distract and delay and um and snare and <sighs> all the things y'all like all the things any any anything you can think of he will just throw at your way to try to to try to manipulate you and get you off course that's what he's been doing with me um and it's it's been he's been trying to convince convince me to go back to old ways and old habits I know I'm not the only one okay it's like I'm doing this thing God's way right and of course, the enemy will come and he'll be like, oh, well, obviously that way isn't working just because I'm in a waiting season with God and I'm walking through a, a wilderness or isolation. So he's like, obviously that way isn't working because have you gotten that thing yet? Like, have you gotten that promise yet? Has that come through yet? Like, obviously he's forgotten about you. You know, like, obviously it's not happening. It's not coming around the way he said it would. So you might as well just go back to doing everything that you used to do, try to figure everything out on your own, okay? Trying to cope the same way that you do, all right? Like using those unhealthy un um, coping mechanisms that you use, all right? You might as well go back to talking to those same people, go back to the place that God told you to leave. You know he told you to leave there, okay? But, but go back anyway, because at least there you would know what's going on, right? So it's all these tactics that the enemy throws at us. And I really hate it. And the words I use, like he, the enemy preys on our disappointments, our discomforts, and like our heartache, right? And that's just so slimy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I hate it so bad that he, that he does that just preying on, on our, lower points of life and it, it's really grinds my gears <laughs> but that's his game is his game is to convince us that God's promises are not for us um 
or that God has somehow taken back his promise towards us, um, that, that we're not meant to inherit the things that God has, has told us we are to inherit. It's really to convince us that our identity is not solidified. And, and therefore, if our identity is not solidified in God, then anything attached to God is not for us, which is the biggest lie straight from the pits of hell. OK, um, it's a confusion that he tries to bring about just to try to take us off course. And I've been fighting in those those mind games, those mind traps that the enemy has tried to to throw Um, and honestly, y'all, I've given into some of it. I'm not perfect. I'm human. I know (laughs) y'all are too, right? But some of the traps I give into because as much as we fight human, humanity, and so we focus and fixate on the things that we can see. I do this a lot where I can only see what I don't have, right? It's like everything that God has promised and prophesied over my life, all those things that have not come to pass yet, I don't see it. Therefore, like that must mean he not doing it or I'm doing something wrong and I don't know how to get to where he is. And maybe I never can get to where he is. Like that that's the lie. That's the lie that the enemy has tried to enthrall and and throw at me in this season. Is like maybe you'll never get there. What if you never get there? Oh, God, that's so good. What if you never get there? That's the lie that the enemy tries to bring about. Um, All the things that haven't happened yet is all I can see. And the enemy will use that to discourage us in the moment and to try to keep us down for hours and days at a time. And it's his way of trying to delay us in our journey because he knows that when God fulfills what he's ready to fulfill in our life, like it's going to be a problem for him. Right. But when I start to get discouraged, when the enemy starts to throw those darts my way, I've been hearing God remind me over and over again that just because I don't see it, that doesn't mean he's not working. So if I don't see it, that means he's working and he's building it for my future and for my betterment. Okay. And if he's working, then it means I got some work to do too. So what I got to work on in order to get the future that he has promised me and that he foresees in my future. Um, and in that it's knowing that again, God is building He's building, he's working everything and everything that we go through right now, even the fights, the traps that the enemy has set before us that we've fallen into the ones that we've overcome and the ones that we've fallen into have already been accounted for. So God already knew that <clears throat> he's already known that we were going to fall into some of these traps. Okay. But he's graced us anyway. So these things are becoming building blocks in God's overall plan. So, Nothing is being wasted and and put 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 away or or thrown away. It's all being used for our good and for our betterment. Um, and so he's been consistently showing me that scripture. It's like Romans eight twenty eight, right? Where it's like, um, for we know that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and who are called according to His purpose. Everything is 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 a building block. It's not. The enemy tries to send stumbling blocks, okay? But what he doesn't know is that they're actually being used to build build us and build our future towards a better future, you know? So um, the the Lord has just been showing me Romans 8, 28, this, this, (laughs) the last two months, I promise y'all, 8, 28, that, um, that everything is working out for our good. So if we believe that, then we have to know that anything that is being thrown towards us, at us, whatever stage in our journey that we're walking in isolation, whatever the case may be transitions that it's all working for our good. It's all going to work out for our good. And y'all like he was showing me the scripture so much. I've been saying it in dreams. I've been reading it word of the day. I actually started my job on 828 like August 28th like that's how much he's been trying to to get this message in my head so um Romans 828 y'all like 
you're called. So that means everything's working out for your betterment. And I hope you know that. Um, now you might start seeing 828 everywhere too. All right. This ain't the show manifest, but <laughs> this is, this is actual real life Bible. All right. Um, uh, but the Lord is funny that way. Like he'll just send all these confirmations. So he's just funny and good and amazing. So even in the midst of all that, I know there was a lot of updates that I shared and different words, but in the midst of all that is me trying to say that the Lord is on our side. There are more for us that are against us, even if we cannot see it in this realm. Okay. In the unseen realm, wars are being fought for us. Okay. And the Lord is going before us and, and conquering and building for our future. And I'm sharing all this to say that I'm still here. It's been a lot, but I'm still here. And if you're watching or listening, that means you're still here too. And that means that you are making it. And that's the important part. All right. We have to keep going, keep walking this journey out step by step in the midst of disappointment, despair, hurt, and pain. Keep going, keep walking in the midst of transition, keep walking, whatever you're facing, just, just keep going. Um, in the midst of isolation, keep walking, keep walking. It's all going to work out for your good and for your betterment. All right. Because on the other side, when all this is said and done, when we're done with, with this secluded season, it's going to be a better us, a more improved us, a revitalized us. We get to, to really reintroduce ourselves, not just to the world, but to ourselves And that's a beautiful thing. God is building you in this season. He's building us in this season. He's making us and molding us into who we need to be in order for us to carry the vision that he's given us, in order for us to steward the vision that he's given us. And overall, that is a beautiful thing. So, yes, sometimes the journey is hard, but in the end, it will definitely be worth it. All right. So, Y'all keep walking this journey out. I'm praying for you. Please pray for me. I hope this encouraged you some way, somehow, and gave you a little bit more insight into my life and things that are going on. Again, thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing. And until next time, remember to stay encouraged.